Staying stuck in the same rank is frustrating. I've been there before several times, so today I'm going to show you how to get unstuck in ranked. Before we hop in, let me thank you for clicking on this video, and watch to the end because I will demonstrate how to escape whatever rank you're currently in. But first, here are three tips on how to get unstuck. Tip number one is to always survive off spawn. Wherever you land, you need to know your spot like the back of your hand. Dying off spawn is what keeps people in their rank and they can't get out because dying off spawn takes off a lot of percent. Knowing your spot better than your opponent can mean life and death in many situations. If you know where all the floor loot and chests spawn, you can loot up faster and eliminate your opponents and have an edge in the battles by knowing where the cover is and where all the buildings are. An easy way to survive off spawn is to be patient. In big POIs with bosses and a lot of people landing there, the patient one always wins. If you rush the boss early, someone will come and third party you and someone else come and third party them over and over until no one's left. If you're patient and wait for others to fight, you can kill them when they're low. Get all the loot and survive off spawn and you'll probably not rank down at that point. An easy way to get good at off-spawn fights is by playing box fights. In box fights, you will have limited mats, weapons, and space to build, just like a real off-spawn fight. Box fights will improve your game sense and peaks as well, and box fights will also improve your mechanics, and if you want to improve your mechanics even more, click the video on the top right-hand corner. Tip number two is to key more than usual. If you want to get unstuck, you need to improve, which is exactly what keying does. W keying people and fighting them all the time in ranked will rank you down in the beginning, but in the end, you will improve and win more fights so they can move up in the ranks quicker. Many people who are stuck in their rank don't key at all, and keying is necessary in ranked because if you don't key people, you won't improve. An easy way to work in keying people without ranking down is by playing speed realistic 1v1s. It's basically the same thing but without the same weapons. Earlier this season when you were constantly ranking up, you were probably keying people. When you get into a higher rank, it will be harder to place higher but that's why you need to key. All the pros didn't become pros by playing for placement, they keyed and lost over and over until they stopped losing. The person who has failed the most at something has also learned the most about it. So don't stop keying people even if it hurts you in the short term because it will benefit you in the long term. And at the end of the day, no one else is going to care if you rank down because you took fights. Tip number three is to learn end game strategies. The difference in rank up you'll get between fifth and first place is very significant. So you need to know all of the end game tactics. The first end game tactic you need to know is how to use different materials. Wood is the weakest material and the easiest to obtain, so use it while rotating to the next circle. Brick is the hardest material to see through when placed, so save it to the very last zone to avoid being seen and damaged as easily. And metal is best used when waiting for the next zone to appear because of its high HP. Another endgame tactic you need to know is when to get a refresh. Refreshes are necessary in the endgame if you want to get more mats and heals before the final 1v1. If you get a refresh at the wrong time, it could cause you to die. An example of getting the refresh at the wrong time is when you have max mats and heals and you take a fight just because. This would be good in a mid-game scenario, but not in an end-game scenario. The best time to get a refresh is between the moving zones and if you find someone boxed up in wood, that usually means they're low on mats and they're an easy target for you to kill. Something else that is important to know for the end game is when to take height. If you have height in the end game with sufficient mats, you will most likely win, which will give you a lot of rank up. This skill is developed by playing lots of zone wars and making it to the end game every round. The last thing, the last thing you can learn for the end game is how to use the grapple blade and when. Learning how to use a grapple blade is essential for end games because you will need it to rotate and fight others. The best time to rotate when using it is when everyone is moving, and since everyone is moving to the next zone, no one can shoot you. You want to edit out the side of your box when using it so people in front of you can't look back and shoot you as easily. And you can practice this pretty easily by playing Forever Zone Wars or other creative maps because the grapple blade just got added to creative maps. Now that I showed you all those tips, let me show you the strategy that I use to rank up. So here we are, we're about to land, and before I show you the whole spot, let me just tell you this is the spot is super good, especially in the higher ranks like Elite, Diamond, and Champion. And I'm in an Elite game right now. So right here, you can see that there are several chests, and we guys got a purple shotgun, which is really good. But the main reason we land here, besides the good loot, is that we can hire this NPC, and he'll actually mark people. And look, he just marked the guy right there. Let's go down here. Let's see if we can kill him. It's gonna go on this thing right here. Looks like we got him before we can go in there. And this is another secret of the spot. And I'll go in there as soon as I go here. Because in this building, you can usually find one to two chests. A couple ammo boxes. 
And um, the best part is it gets you to full health every time because there are like 10 slurp bells in here. So as you can see, there's literally like 10 and it gets you to full every time as long as you haven't taken damage. So now that we've looted this area, I can show you the secret area down here, which is one of the best parts. And there's also plenty of mats nearby, which um, I never leave this place without max brick and wood, which is kind of crazy. Alright, so let's go into the secret area. And you guys have probably seen this before, which is the secret underground cave. And this is the easiest way to get in. There's tons of rocks and trees to farm. So you can really just farm in peace without having to worry about other people third partying you. As you can see, I already have max wood, which is kind of crazy. Alright, and if you want even more loot, there's a secret area in here. If you break this rock, it leads you to the real entrance of the cave. And there's more chests right over here. Alright guys, a storm is coming now, so let me show you the next part of the strategy. Alright, so once you get to the top of this hill, there's a guaranteed chest spawn that's always here. And there's also a launch pad that you can get on. And once you hit this launch pad, you want to go to the storm tower. And if you guys didn't know, collecting the storm tower and the storm island, they actually give you more percent for the rank up, so you always want to go for it. Alright, once it spawns in, and you see the rift, just place a wood box around this and get out. And make sure you get a little bit away so then um as soon as it spawns in it doesn't push you back as you can see my npc does get pushed back because he was too close now since you're in the cool box you can just kill him with your weapons all right now that that's done we can just put it in here and that's three percent and the storm tower which is really useful later on in the game but the next part of the strategy i would usually go to either of the medallions and try to get those but it looks like since they're not in the next circle, it's not going to be worth fighting them as well. And there's a player right there. 100. Looks like he's healing up, so we're going to push over him. Cracked. Oh, that's a third party, isn't it? Can't tell if that was my bot or if it's, a, if it's an actual player. I think it's my bot. <laughs> oh, how did he shoot me right there? That was kind of crazy. Oh man, my FPS is going really down right now. It's not good. Alright, hopefully my guy can mark him. Perfect. Oh, there is a third party here, so... Since the storm is coming, the next circle is far. It's best to just head out in this situation. It might seem like running, but really, if you want to survive and rank up, you gotta play smart with your fights. Alright, as you can see, it's going pretty far up. And our cash is on that edge, which I don't know if it's going to be worth getting it. But we can go ahead and try to get there, and hopefully there's no one else trying to contest it. Also, another cool strategy you can do with the follower is you can point him to go different directions to try to distract people. At this point, I'm not going to shoot at him because I need to get my cash and heal up before I start fighting again. But as soon as we get this, we're going to go to the next circle. And there is someone on the railroad, or the railway, the, the train that has a medallion. I think it's better if I try to go to the Storm Island, because even if it's super contested, we can always just hop on the last fight to get out of there. Also, like I said, getting Storm Island does give you more percent than kills do, which is kind of weird. Alright, looks like we have this for ourselves. Let's grab this medkit real quick and keep claiming this flag. Since Alright, we like got the island, which will give us some super great loot. I don't know. I think I'm going to keep the sniper, because... Oh, three big pods. I'm gonna keep the mechets. I don't know if I should take this because I do have a sniper, which is also very good. And it looks like it's pulling at right. Okay. And now, um, if you also if you get a vault, which I usually do if um I have time to get a vault, then you can get all this gold back, so you can hire the guy every round without having to run out, without running out of gold. So let's just kind of camp edge zone because looks like no one's probably gonna be around here. We're gonna have to rotate farther south into zone. This guy. Oh my gosh, my FPS is going down so much right now. I'm at like 60. I think this guy's just gonna go away at this point. Not really a fight worth fighting. Let's go in this bush right now. Save some of our mats. Reserve. We can get. No, we can try to get this refresh. Just this box a little bit. See what he does. 
Alright, looks like he doesn't want to fight, because if he wanted to fight, probably would have came for us. So, but looks like we're doing that. You can see the guy right there, actually. Alright, next circle's right here. You can see where the guy is. That's, the, that's why the marking is so good. I just cracked the shield. In fact, it's probably going to accuse me for aimbot now, because I hit all of my shots. Because of the marker. Alright, basically 75 on him. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. I'm gonna push him. Alright, that guy's dead. Look, like he was low on match, which is good for us, and I should have blocked my back. Alright, let's go ahead and hit the island. Oh, I took one tick, which is annoying. So we can just stay in the air for a while and not have to waste our mats trying to conserve it. I have plenty of mats and I can go in this dude's builds right here. Alright, cool. Someone's probably gonna land on height or something, I don't know. I do have shock ones, but I don't have grapple points, so it's gonna be hard to recover. <laughs> Oh, somehow I killed this guy to gravity. Apparently. Let's use a metal actually. Oh, too late. I gotta go before the storm kills me. Okay, moving zone. So let's go ahead and shock it down. Front zone. Oh, I took, I'm about to take a lot of storm damage. Okay. Alright, let's use wood while rotating, like I said earlier in the video. Because you don't want to waste all your hard mats. It's like no one's really looking at height, which is good for me. Let's keep our position. <coughs> Alright, let's see if anyone gets... Alright, looks like we should be in the next zone right now. 100? Dead? Nice, go ahead and get these mats real quick. It took one tick, but we got some extra mats, which is good. It's a 1v1. Okay, I gotta clutch this up right now. Come on, I gotta clutch up, gotta clutch up. I have plenty of mats, so I don't have to worry. He's chopping like a annoying... I'm dead. If you want to see how to prepare for tournaments, click the video in the middle of the screen. Jesus loves you, and I hope you have an awesome day.